We're going to post an interview today with uh, Shep Gordon that was recorded before the election, but uh, but it's what we do. It's a good interview. It's a great interview. A lot of wisdom. A lot of talk about Alice Cooper and Groucho Marx and other stuff. But I know that seems irrelevant. I mean, everything seems irrelevant now. That that is the the feeling. That, uh, that I got last night. We were on set late checking in with election results. And it was, it was devastating. There's, there's no other way to look at it for, for people that believe in progress and change and cultural evolution. It's devastating for those reasons. Whoever you decided to vote for. And the feeling last night, there was a there was a selfish panic that you know, what does this mean? How scared do I have to be? And then you start thinking like, how scared do we have to be? And you know, what it what how you know what is this what does this mean? And and innately, my my first my first reaction, which is surprising, uh, but not not really for me, is is to 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 become despondent and depressed and and. And, and grief stricken and, and self pitying and, and, and just defeated. The bottom line is there's a, there's a fucking gaping wound in this country. And, and I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it gets fixed. I, I know that I got to keep talking. This isn't fundamentally a political show, but I, I believe that uh, he was the wrong guy. And I, and I believe a, a lot of people got suckered. And I believe that we witnessed one of the, the longest and most insanely compelling long cons ever executed. And I, who are the marks? Well, I guess on some level, more than half of this country, maybe the world. And this isn't the first time that someone has completely hoodwinked an entire nation. There's plenty of racism. Plenty of misogyny, plenty of sexism, plenty of anti-Semitism, plenty of the worst parts of of any country. There's plenty of that, but there was just plenty of people whose reaction towards the slow progress of social, racial, and economic change, their reaction was Trump. So that means the predominant feeling is, fuck you, fuck change, let's bring it back. Let's bring back something I understand, something narrow, something not only conservative, but something that feeds and justifies an entitlement that is shifting. Don't change anything. As a matter of fact, get rid of the change in progress we made because it doesn't doesn't jive with me. So this is you know this is where we're at, and you can sit there and go, well, you know, he's not my president. Many of them did it through Obama, but the but the truth is, is that you know the way it works is that he is he's he's everyone's president. The president reflects the country. If you got a problem with him, you got a problem with the country. So what do we do? Do, do I sit in the despondent, grief-stricken futility of, of, of someone who, who gives up? No, man. No. This is a shitty time and place. He will be a shitty president because he's a shitty person. So what does that mean as an American as somebody who believes in change and wants to, you know, try to fight. Well, you, you keep fighting. You keep talking. You keep tight with your communities. And, and we, we try to fucking heal this gaping wound. Maybe I'm being too optimistic. What am I going to yell at people? Fuck. I lived through eight years at W. I fought that fight. Lost. Look, what I do here is I talk to people. 
about struggle, about art, about creativity, about personal problems, personal awareness, uh, about social struggle. But they, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do. So maybe it's time to realize that tweeting is not social action. Tweeting is not activism. I mean, I got to change my life too. You know, on some levels, you get a little spoiled when you're insulated and you get a little disconnected from what other people are going through. Maybe even your neighbors. Maybe even you know people that we don't know anymore or that we thought we knew and that we didn't. But continuing to talk about these things, it's, it's important. I mean, it's, 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 it's the answer, really. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. And that's what people should be doing all the time in their lives. I mean, fucking talk to people, talk to people in depth, feel out where their pain is at, feel out where you have common ground, feel out, you know, why, why we can all live together. But, you know, under the surface was all this fucking hatred and anger and, and just garbage emotions that built up. But the weird thing is, is when you get one on one or in a group of people in a circle full of people, things are different. Seeing someone face to face, feeling their life in your face and in your heart in that moment, feeling that. That makes a fucking difference. Now we're all fucking detached. We're all floating in our little narcissism pods that we communicate from. How do you think so much of this hate took place? The fucking phones. Now, I don't want to sound like an old man, but these are the extensions of our brains. These are, you know, this idea that if you're smart enough, if you're together enough, you can adapt to technology and use it appropriately. It's not true. It's a, it's a, it's a, an illusion of social connection. That's innately cowardly and innately limited in terms of human connection. It's got nothing to do with it. Man, I got, it's like, we work together. We work with these people, these people. Who are these people? You decide who they are. We're all people. We got to fucking talk to each other. You can't just tweet at them. You can't just like what they posted. I don't know. It might be the only way out of this. I mean, yeah, don't you ever have this fantasy that that all that shit just breaks? I mean, what is it really? That's what I do in here. I talk to people and all of my assumptions about anybody. Granted, I'm not talking about politics. Usually I'm not talking about, you know, social change necessarily. But everything I assumed about anybody that's ever sat in front of me was wrong because it was limited by whatever input I decided to focus on to define them. And when they sit down as living, breathing, fragile people, everything opens up. Because that's what humans do. And we've lost a lot of that. And this may sound trite, but what else do we got but each other? I mean, fuck. I've worked with Republicans. I've had them open for me. I I I know people and I've worked with people and I am friends with people that think differently than me. Drastically. That's one of the beautiful things about comedians and about this world that we live in for the most part. Is that you can you can have those different views. Now, who knows if there's even a context anymore that will harness this shit. I don't know. But all we got is each other. I know that. I know. Sounds trite. True. True. Fuck. All right. So. For those of you who voted for him, I hope he I hope he delivers what you want to deliver. I hope you're happy with yourselves. And uh, because we're all going to have to go through it together. And those of us who didn't. That believe in a different type of country, that fight continues, 
and I'll keep talking here and I'll keep talking to people and I'll try to keep you entertained. I, I don't want to be selfish here, but I'm, you, you, you know, it just feels like things change. I don't know what the tone of things is going to be as we enter the new year or how everything's going to pan out. I'll, I'll stay engaged and I'll keep talking. But it is, um, it is a, a, a sad and devastating blow for those of us who believed that, at the very least, social and economic could change could, could happen and continue to happen. And it's a scary time. But I'll hang out. All right? 